Hi guys, it's Ro. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're doing a video with Adam about a day in the life during lockdown. So if you're interested in a day in the life of an inmate while they're on lockdown in their cell, they cannot leave for days on end, please keep watching. If you're new here, my name is Ro. I am the founder of Strong Prison Lives and Families, a nonprofit organization. I am the author of a book called The Comeback Code, and I have been coaching prison wives since 2009. We do not glorify, we do not glamorize prison life, we do not wait for our loved ones to come home and hit the street, but I share my life and my experiences with you so you can make the best of this journey when you're faced with it. So this video kind of took a left turn while we were in the middle of doing it. First of all, we got cut off because I was asking Adam a lot of questions on the first call. We only get 15 minutes in a chunk and then the call will cut us right off. We have no control over that. So after we got cut off, Adam sent me an email that I got a couple hours later and he said, I was so frustrated when we got off that call. And initially I thought it was because I kept interrupting him with questions. And then he went on to say that it was because the pending looming feeling of lockdown and the fact that it can happen at any time and they didn't have lockdowns where he is right now for the first probably five or six years that he was there maybe a half day here and there, maybe a day, max two days over the course of probably five or six years. And then over the past few years, things have progressively gotten worse there. It's gotten a lot more hostile. Staff has turned over. There have been a lot more young people and people who are trying to make a name for themselves flex their correction muscles. Not to say that everybody is there is bad and not to say that COs deserve to get a bad rap, but Adam expressed his frustrations in the second part of this call, and he did not continue with the day in the life, which basically is just a day in the life on the outside. He shrinks it into his cell. So he'll work out in his cell. He'll shower sometimes in his cell. They take the sink and they rig it into what they call a bird bath, and they shower themselves there. Instead, he kind of went off in talked about his frustrations, why he's frustrated. And I asked him a couple of more questions about lockdown. So just so you know, it's not 100% a day in the life hour by hour, like the first video I made about the day in the life on a regular weekday when they can roam free around the prison, around the movements when they're allowed to. I'll post that up there in the cards, but this one is a little bit different. And I think it's great because it allows you guys to formulate questions and post them in the comments below. So then we can make a follow-up answering all the questions for you guys. Without any other delays, here is that video with Adam. Please show him some love below because you'll see towards the end of this call, he's a little bit frustrated. Well, let me, uh, let me jump right into it then. Since we did a regular day, what a regular day in here looks like, how about what a normal day when the institution is on lockdown, what that looks like, yeah? Go for it. All right. Well, for me, I maintain the same schedule. I get up at 5.45, 6 o'clock, either way. You know, go through the normal routine, get my water, use the, use the restroom, wash up, make coffee, listen to the news. Now... Just like during the week before they open the doors. If the news isn't on, I'll turn on NPR and listen to that. Now, one of the things that they sometimes do during lockdowns is turn all the TVs off. Now, that's an additional punishment. And for some guys, I mean, that's like torture. Really quick, but, do you have TVs in your cells? What do you mean? No. And the feds, Federal Bureau of Prisons, they don't have TVs in the cells. The only TVs are out on the housing units. Each of those TVs has a FM transmitter attached to it, and it's tuned into a specific radio station that's going to broadcast shortwave, basically just right there in the housing unit. Like one of the TVs here is tuned to 88.1. Now, I might be able to go outside and get an actual radio station on that channel, but when I'm in the unit, it's only going to pick up that TV. So there's generally anywhere from five, seven, five to seven TVs on a housing unit, and those are split up in a multitude of different ways, geography, uh, organizations, gangs, races, uh, depends. 
You mean, what do you mean split up? They can only certain people can watch a certain TV? Only certain people can turn the TV, get to choose what's going to be on that TV. Oh, turn the channel. Okay. Yep. So. so basically dictate what everyone else is going to watch. And, you know, that's the primary cause of many of the issues in the feds. I feel like we could do a whole video about TVs. My goodness. Absolutely. But since we're not, so, <laughs> yeah, what do you, no phone, no TV, what do you do? No phone, no TV. No Wi-Fi? Read. Read. So, well. What's and, that? You know, for some guys, that's, that's torture. I mean, yeah. You know, they, they don't want to read. So, a lot of guys will just sleep. And to, to be honest, that it's the vast majority. Whenever we're on lockdown, most people choose to just stay in bed and sleep as much of that time away. So I don't know if you want to say it's, you know, if there's much punishment there, but you do get to the point where uh, I guess, you, you know, you just can't sleep anymore. For me, I try to stay on a normal routine. And part of that is uh, by about 7.30, 8 a.m., they're going to come around with breakfast. And each of the cells has a small slot in it that opens up. The officer comes by and keys it, and they pass through whatever that breakfast for you and your celly is going to be. Now, remember, it's two guys living in a bathroom. That's basically, you know, what a cell is. And what they're feeding us on lockdown is what's most convenient, or sometimes it's about punishment. Now, they might throw a brown bag through the slot that has... Uh, say a piece of fruit, maybe, you know, for breakfast, uh, there'll be a little cup of cereal in there, dry cereal, two half pints of milk, that's pretty much it, oh, maybe uh, like a donut or some sort of pastry that's wrapped up. Now, if they're really trying to punish us, then you have what are called, they're just boxes. Everybody refers to them as boxes, and the boxes are pretty much all the same. They're either bologna and cheese or peanut butter and jelly. Breakfast? Bologna and cheese for breakfast? Yeah, for breakfast too. It's Ew. the same thing. It comes in a little box. It basically looks, I'm trying to think. Like a Happy Meal? Like if you got a UPS package that showed up on your door. Let's call it from a federal prison. One of those brown boxes contains like... I don't know, 25, 30 of these box uh, meals that they give us. And I don't know how they meet the caloric requirements or any sort of nutritional value, but this is what they buy, and I guess they get away with it, saying that it's an emergency of sorts. So those are the same everywhere. They're absolutely terrible. You cannot live on them. That's probably why so many people get become ill. But anyways, not to get stuck on that. Well, really quick before you keep going, I remember one time we did the calories in a day when you had to stop working out that one time where you were on a long lockdown. And I think we came up to like 500 calories a whole day for grown men, which is insane. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Keep going. Okay. So after breakfast, you know, most everyone gets up grabs the, the tray, the box, whatever it is for breakfast, and they just go right back to bed. But generally around 8.30, 9 o'clock, because majority of the staff that work out front, like the administrators and, and everybody up in the offices, they're going to come in about 8 o'clock, they'll have a big meeting, and determine what they're going to do for the day. Now, when we're on lockdown, that might mean doing interviews, where they come around and they pull guys out of the cell one at a time, handcuffed, bring them in the back, and try and ask everyone what happened. Is it safe to open up? You know, it's, it's just about gathering information and, and checking, the, basically see what's going on. Depending on the facility that you're in, they generally don't get a whole lot of information, but it's just going through the process, right? The second thing that they might be doing are cell searches. So they'll come around in teams and you'll see them break out the gloves and just like they pull us out for interviews, they're going to pull you out of the cell. They'll put you in a storage room or wherever they have space and they're going to tear through your cell 
And if it's, again, if it's being done as punishment, they're going to take every little thing that they possibly can. Oh. Or just make a mess and leave you to clean it up later. Regardless if you're involved in the drama or not, right? If they want to punish their mass punishing? Yeah, everybody's punished oh. equally. It doesn't matter. And unfortunately, you know, in recent years, it's become more and more of an adversarial relationship and us versus them. So, you know, God forbid something happens to staff, even if it's minor and it's a personal situation, the whole institution is going to be punished for it. I mean, mm -hmm. that's just, it's to set a set an example and to make a statement. And, and yeah, it's, it's overkill, but, you know, that's how it's done it. Honestly, there's, there's no recourse for that. There's no accountability. There's nobody else, you know, looking over to see what's happening. So, yeah, that's what happens. The other thing, aside from the interviews, the cell searches, every three days we're supposed to get a shower. So they'll run showers the same way. And that's something that when I first got here, they didn't have gates where they could lock us in the shower, but now they do. They went around and added all of those. So most facilities, I think now that's something that they put in so that they can be a bit more secure. So they'll put you in the shower so you got five minutes lock you in there. And then you got to hurry up. Shower, question. Question. Cuff back up. And, yep. Individuals in the shower or you're locked in a shower with 100 guys? No. No, it's all individual showers. Okay, sorry. Keep going. One person, one shower. Okay, go ahead. And at one point, it was, I, I think we were supposed to get a hot meal once every three days. But somewhere along the line, that got lost. Like, they don't, they don't even do that anymore. Do they still do the showers every three days? Showers. It's supposed to be once every three days. It's kind of hit or miss, you know. But anyways, around, around noon, they're going to do lunch. Lunch is going to be the same thing as breakfast, same routine. After lunch for the afternoon from that 1 to maybe 3.30, it's going to be the same as the morning. Either they're doing interviews, they're doing searches, we're doing showers. And this is initially during the lockdown. Now, the longer one of these stretches on, the days just become dead time. Like, you don't see or hear from anybody. Now, sometimes you'll get the administration, the ward and the AWs, they'll do a round, they'll walk around. Sometimes they'll talk to you. Sometimes they won't even take a question, you know, and tell you what's going on. There's plenty of times where we have no idea what's going on, why we're even locked down. You know, sometimes you, you know, hear by word of mouth, somebody will try and spread the word, but. How do you keep track what day it is? I know that sounds silly, but how many days you've been in, if it's Monday or Wednesday, how do you keep track of that? Well, hopefully if you have a calendar, or if you have, like I know, I keep track of the day by my watch. Okay. But again, there's plenty of people that don't have that. You know, and I, and I, I do realize I'm fortunate to where I'm able to stock up. And for instance, today I went to the commissary. And I'm shopping differently now than I was, say, a year or two ago because of the frequent lockdowns that we've had. I catch myself, I'm stocking up on everything. Whereas normally, you know, it's kind of, uh, what do I need this week? It's not a big deal. Now I'm like, man, if we... This call is from a federal prison. Do I have enough food to get me through? Do I have enough coffee? Do I have batteries? Because part of this is, the last lockdown that we were on, we had bologna and cheese every day, lunch and dinner for... I, what was it, two weeks? Whatever it was, it was at least a week that, that we got that straight. And I went through all the food that I had. Now, guys that are in the penitentiaries who are used to frequent lockdowns, generally you keep a, a lockdown bag under your bunk, you know, filled with food specifically that's gonna get you through a lockdown of a month or possibly when you're at a medium, it's not supposed to be like that. But the system is changing so much that lockdowns are becoming far more frequent. Yeah. And it's an unfortunate reality that we have to plan that way. Well, when we got cut off talking about
about it being the way to him, what it's like on lockdown. I realized after we hung up that I was, uh, I guess, a little frustrated. And, you know, I, I always try and check in with myself and see if, if I'm feeling a little off, see what's causing that. So after doing a little self-reflection, uh, I realized that the difference between talking about a day in the normal life in here, which is centered around my routine and the things that I choose to do and taking advantage of different opportunities, I realized that when I was talking about a day in the life on lockdown, it was much of my frustration being expressed about what I believe is like unjust punishment, mass punishment, where we're locked down, don't even know why. And many of the, uh, I'll just say abuse of authority that takes place, whether it's, you know, from whomever is working the unit, all the way up to the administration sanctioning the lockdowns. It's, it's a frustrating time, and I realized that that's where I, I guess that emotion was coming from afterwards. And I just wanted to, to kind of express that, that simply by reliving it, that experience and talking about it, the effect that it had on me, and thinking about long term, the effects that being locked down like this frequently. This call is from a federal prison. The long term effects that this is having on all of us. I, you know, I know that there's been quite a push in recent years to, to ban solitary confinement, but I would say, you know, being locked in a cell with another person, for me, is even more difficult figuring out how to manage that, especially when you consider how rampant uh, mental health issues are, drug abuse, and, you know, they just throw two people in a cell and tell them, hey, figure it out. Mm. Like, that's far more dangerous and, and stressful, uh, but that's what happens on a daily basis. You know, everything is reactionary. So, being on lockdown, that day in the life of lockdown, uh, probably wasn't, uh, you know, the, the most fun experience that I've had, had to relate, but I also wanted to highlight some of the things that are positive about being on lockdown. Back when I was in Allenwood, I would set aside, I basically had a stack of paperwork and books, uh, some puzzles, things that I would put aside specifically for lockdown, because you never knew how long it was going to be. I hope you tell the story I'm thinking. Go ahead. <laughs> Is it? And whenever, I'm not sure. I don't, I, I got plenty of lockdown stories. Which one are you thinking of? I, uh, well, I want to know if you're... <laughs> If you're thinking the same thing. Go ahead, which one? The one where you drew your foot. Oh, no, that's not the one I was thinking of. But, uh, yeah, that's that's my uh, artistic claim to fame. Uh, <laughs> Self-portrait of my my foot, yeah. Strangely, that's the uh, the best drawing I've, I've ever done. I wish I could find it so I could put a picture of it in this video. <laughs> Yeah, I, you know, it's just, that's not one of my talents, but uh, when you're locked in, sometimes you'll give new things a shot, and I, I will say that being conditioned to being locked down for extended periods of time, not only helped me, uh, maybe forced me to develop or to adopt some aspects of my daily routine that I still carry with me that I do believe are healthy, but it also put me in a position to try new things, to read more at times when I had gotten away from reading. But that's me personally. I, I, I'm all too well aware that most guys, when they get locked in, they're going to go to sleep. That's what's going to happen. Most everyone just goes to bed. I, I'm always looking to make the best out of any situation. But, you know, even in thinking about this, I was kind of conflicted between making the most of the situation and being conditioned by the repetitiveness 
of being locked out to, to not even mind being locked in. And I've heard numerous guys, you know, that have done plenty of years in the penitentiary where lockdowns are normal, say, well, I don't even care about being locked out. And I don't think they realize the significance of that. Again, it's not making the best of a bad situation where you're fully conscious, like, wow, this sucks. But let me see what I can get out of it. Let me spend some time reading, catching up on things that, you know, I haven't been doing. Versus, you know, well, I'm locked in again. So what? It doesn't matter. Like, this is normal. Because, again, I come back to, like, the long-term consequences of that. What are the effects? I mean... If that's normal, how are you ever going to deal with life on the outside and, and things moving far more quickly than they do in here and having all those additional responsibilities and expectations placed on you? Yeah, I have two responses. Were you finished? Yeah. I have two responses to that. So I remember one of your first lockdowns when we first got back in touch and you said something like, oh, no, it's like a vacation for me. And it was a vacation from the madness that goes on in high security level prison every day. And it was so crazy for me to fathom that. But I think that there was a lot of truth behind that. And then second, a lot of times throughout the years, I get women on Strong Prison Wives and Families who come to me freaking out that he's on lockdown and he's, from a federal prison. And he's suffering and this and that. And I always tell them, Lockdown is more difficult for us on the outside than it, than it is for you guys on the inside. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I would say it, it definitely is, in many situations, uh, a reprieve to a degree when, when you live in a high-stress environment sometimes. Uh, it's nice to be behind a locked door if you're in a cell with someone, either by yourself or with someone that you have a good rapport with. Yeah. That you can sleep well at night. Yeah. That's an unfortunate reality. That is the other side of it. One of the things that I've been thinking about because we've had such a dramatic turnover in staff here over the last year is and so many of these new young officers that it's it's a different attitude that they've adopted and we have an administration that's much more authoritative and, and heavy handed and I believe that's what they're promoting. And I don't think they realize what it means to not just have this experience, to live in a cell yeah. and know with another person and to get locked in at night and to live that. What I would think would be beneficial, and I really hope somebody picks this up and runs with it, would be during their training, because they go away to a training center, that while they're taking that training, that they and one of their peers, someone that they know, uh, be locked in a cell, be put in a cell just like they are going to lock someone in for the next 20 years of their career. Yeah. Make that part of it. Let them have just that small taste, that little bit of experience just overnight, you know, and where they get up in the morning and have to figure out how to get ready together because it comes so easy for all of these, you know, new recruits and, and people that work in this system to say, well, you can figure it out it's not that difficult it's easy to say that when you've never had the experience yeah or convince yourself that you deserve it because you're a criminal there you go and, and that's the other side of it you know that somehow there is punishment in addition to being here that there is additional punishment that is deserved yeah what's the longest you've ever been on a lockdown can you remember mm, uh, a couple months couple months, what was it like when they finally popped the doors and let you out, back out? Even after a week, it's almost like, it's like walking out of prison. And to a certain degree, like there is a sense of freedom there. And guys respond to that differently. For me, instead of getting caught up in all the frenetic energy and, and it gets a bit chaotic and everyone's trying to get on the phone and the emails, and me, I'll stay in the cell. Yeah. I'll stay in the cell and trying to allow some of that energy to, to burn off before I come out and interact with people. Even for me, I notice even after a week when you call me after a week of lockdown or a few days of lockdown, I notice that I notice differences. Like I notice that you're a lot slower. You're maybe not short, but 
like your playfulness and your sense of humor isn't where it usually is, if that makes sense. It's hard to explain, but I do notice differences too. I'm sure you're, there's a level of frustration there. Well, and yeah, it's definitely frustration and, and just hearing that <laughs> bothers me. I know, I didn't even want to say, if we weren't making this video, I probably never, would have never told you because I know you hold these things close. Today, your regular day in a life video posted or day in life on a regular day. And what's shocking is what hit people the hardest, especially people that aren't, have no relation to anybody inside was the fact that you've been retaliated against and haven't had your teeth cleaned for five years. And I think people, it was a light bulb, like how inhumane that is, how ridiculous that is. And that's not even the half of it. Yeah. You know, there are plenty of things that I definitely don't want to talk about. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm still on this side that I know people would find shocking, and and I think it's important that they hear those things because you know people need to know. I mean, we as a society are responsible for this. Uh, there's a great quote about you know society should not be judged by its successes, but in how it treats its uh, least fortunate and its prisoners. Yeah. Something along those lines. I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but yeah. So what else about lockdown do you want to add? I don't know. I don't, I don't think there's anything else that I would want to add to it. I mean, it's kind of been, you know, weighing heavily on my mind. And I think I'm ready to let go of it and uh, move on to another topic. Would you like to be locked in my bedroom instead? Would I like to what? Be just locked in my bedroom instead? We can call that a lockdown. Absolutely. <laughs> I'll take that lockdown. Right. Yeah. You might be like, let me out. <laughs> this is no vacation. You guys keep staying strong, keep loving strong, keep supporting one another through this journey because you're one day closer to it all being behind you. Lots of love from my heart to all of yours. I'll see you beautiful ladies and gentlemen in the next one. Bye guys. I don't want to have to wait like a year to see you. Oh, no worries. What if I look really old? Well Oh, please. <laughs> you always